Besides sharing the machine learning group within the Faculty of Technology at Bielefeld University. And just to name a few, she has a strong focus particularly on recursive neural networks, learning for uh, structured data, self-organizations, uh, but also industry uh, 4.0. Uh, similar to Rainer, Barbara is member of various scientific groups. Uh, for instance, the Triple E, the IEEE Computational Intelligence Society, the Intelligence uh, International Neural New, uh, Network Society, and uh, the Society for Computer Science. So, Professor Hammer, again from my side, welcome and uh, thank you very much for joining us with a keynote on opening black boxes with XAI technology. The stage is yours. Thank you very much. So. Um, um, Professor Rainer Stark already uh, mentioned a lot the importance of trust and more or less I would like to talk a little bit about um, how to raise trust in, in machine learning technologies basically. And um, let me first um, start with a general observation. So machine learning can be used in two stages when products are designed. On the one hand it can support the design process. For example, concrete task would be how to select sensors because this would be sufficient to control the process or how to optimize the product quality before releasing the product. On the other hand, machine learning components or more generally AI components are of course product components on their own, such as uh, control components to have intelligent control when it's not possible to model everything. Um, perfectly or have virtual sensors. And why is it a problem that sometimes you might not want to trust these um, parts? Uh, let me give you an example um, from a virtual sensor, so to speak. Um, let's talk about driver assistance systems. Um, a very yeah, funny depicting of, of one of the things which are delivered today is, is that instead of your fellow driver who could warn you when you want to turn right and there's a bike, you might have a computer or AI component sitting there and warning you, oh, watch, you should not turn right now, it's a bike here. What you need as an intelligent component to be able to do that, you need two parts. On the one hand, you need to detect the intention of the driver to turn right because you don't need to warn a driver about a bike if it if the driver is driving straight um, and on the second part you need to detect the bike and the first is an example where we collaborated with a honda research institute um, individualized driver um, intention monitoring um, which was more or less pretty successful, meaning that you can deliver components um, which based on your behavior, by observing your behavior, are able to detect whether you would like to turn right, straight or left um, in the next few seconds. So this exists and is possible. On the other hand, there do exist these wonderful deep networks like, for example, YOLO, uh, which are able to detect on every image uh, that there's a bike like here for example and you if you put these two together then you might have your intelligent component supporting you when driving and now there are um, things happening like this one tesla's autopilot running runs accelerates towards a big red fire car directly from in front of you so why does it happen? It's big, it's red, it's standing directly in front of you. And the problem is not only that, as Professor Stark already said, that there are errors, but the errors like this one are just not intuitive at all. Meaning if this collaborates, um, this AI together with people, then you might easily lose trust in the AI component because the errors are just not as expected. Um, so machine learning and AI models are wrong. They are always wrong for some settings, but the crucial thing is not that they are wrong, but they are wrong in very unexpected ways, which might be opposite to what humans call, expect and which might also be opposite to classical system design, uh, where some errors are of course accounted for, but not these ones, obviously. What could be a solution? One solution would be to 
design or in which M machine learning or AI components such that they are interpretable. So mean humans should understand the behavior as well as the errors. And on the other hand, if you have interpretable models, it might be easier to integrate prior knowledge. It might also be easier to integrate safely such components into the system. There does exist an increasing um, yeah, um, um, number of um, explanation methods. And therefore, I would just like to give you a rough uh, taxonomy of how such explanation methods could work. And I would like to go into one specific um, yeah, way to have models more interpretable. Um, what you can decide in the first place is whether the design of AI components is per design already explainable, which would be this right part where one has, for example, neurosymbolic approaches. One has um, the generalized matrix learning vector quantization, which develop, was developed by us, which is a prototype based method together with uh, relevance learning, um, giving you interpretable results. There's the classification by components architecture, which has been designed uh, by a PhD student um, who worked together with Porsche to have some parts more interpretable. There are on the other side post hoc methods, meaning you have a model trained like a deep network and you would like to have insight into what the model is doing after the model has been trained. And this can be decided, div divided into either black box explanations. So these are uh, explanation models which run on arbitrary black box models like the LIME. It's one of the um, famous, most famous and the earliest ones, um, interpreting every model as concerns to what is most relevant for the decision made or counterfactual explanations where, for example, we now have a toolbox which tell you what should have happened to change the outcome such that the outcome is not as, uh, as observed. There are model specific approaches, which is a middle one, which are post hoc, but they take into account the specific AI um, design process to more or less to be more efficient, like the deep lift, the layer wise relevance propagation, uh, which has been pioneered by a Berlin group, the spray, which is the top on of that, the deep view from my group, model distillation, and so on. What I would like to look into is the very rightmost part. So how to have AI models which are interpretable by design. And I would like to tell you an example from the um, from an industry corporation, um, which is optimization of product quality together with uh, one of the major players in the uh, region of Ostwestfalia Lippe. So the challenge is um, the company is producing electric uh, plugs and the quality of contact pins should be um, tested, checked, because you have to do a coating with uh, silver, gold, other material. And of course, you would like to spend as few um, costly material as required, but at the same time have a very robust coating such that if you use the plugs uh, many times, then they are still um, functional and pretty much like um, how furniture is tested when you go to Ikea, you can wrap two of these pins together and then observe how much is, how big is the abrasive wear after having wrapped the pins together. You can take photos from that because it's a big region, you uh, comparably big region for the um, um, solution you need. You take a few po photos and stitch them together. And now what you end up with is images like this one, which are actually not only 2D, but also 3D images. So you also know the depths. Uh, and based on that, you would like to predict how much is the abrasive wear, because then you could uh, optimize your um, uh, process such that, um, yeah, such that the whole thing is um, as robust as possible. Um, you could either do that by uh, having what would be called end-to-end -end modeling, so directly trying to train a deep network which predicts the abrasive volume. And the problem is this will pretty much not work because this is not interpretable. 
at all. And the reason for that is um, uh, what I've shown here. So this is a view in information visualization perspective of a deep neural network, a classical one. So this is even not a very big one, but it's ResNet 20, which uh, is shown for a part of the Cypher data set. So it's also not a particularly big data set. And what you can see is, this is how the classification of the deep network is happening. The colors are the classes and the bubbles here, the white parts are the class boundaries. And you see it's extremely complex. So if you have a deep network end-to-end -end learn, even if it's not particularly big one, it's already so complex that you have no chance to really understand what is going on for the whole network. Therefore, you will never have enough data in the setting and you will ha never have the possibility to really understand everything. Therefore, what would be a good idea is to have the process of the design such that the process itself is understandable. So not predicting the abrasive wear directly, rather what we have done is we predict from this 3D image or the 2D image regions. So we do a segmentation where we have an inner region where we have the wear, we have a region where we have particles sticking on it, so it's uh, noisy, and we have a region where the pins are still intact. And this can be done with a UNET architecture with comparably few data. And the good thing is that if you look at the outputs of the deep networks, the errors this network is doing are understandable for humans. For example, you see here in the middle that there is some green area within the abrasive wear, which is, doesn't make sense because you have always convex areas, so you can easily co correct these errors so you understand the errors and you can correct them by filling out holes in the predictions part and this interpretable model by design where you also understand the errors by design can now be integrated into a second step where you use the classification into intact areas to fit a cylinder on the whole um, image such that you, then you can compute in the area which has been classified as, uh, as, as um, damaged area, the difference of the observed uh, set values from the 3D camera to the fitted cylinder. Does it work? It works extremely well. It works such that the mean average prediction error is 10 times smaller than what you get with manual work. And the whole process is extremely stable because of the design. So this is more or less one example towards XAI, which by design changes the learned function, which is uh, might be a complex deep end-to-end -end learning by another deep network, which just models a part of the process, such that the output of the deep network and its errors are interpretable by design, such that the user can now understand why, why not, and when you succeed, what happens when you fail, and can trust the whole thing, um, because when there's an error, it might happen that you can inspect where the error happened and what, what has happened. Might be that there's still some material sticking to it. So this was an example for an by design explainable model, which more or less um, follows also one um, strat strategy, which is at the moment um, one of the major strategies in the domain. And it was pioneered, for example, by Cynthia Rudin, who had this very nice um, paper on stop explaining black box models, but uh, do interpretable models by design. I will not go into any of the post talk explanation models which are not interpretable by design. If you would be interested of any of those, and there are many more, these are like classical ones, then I would like to advise you to uh, sign up for next, year's, next week's workshop where these will be explained in the, our Getting AI Ready workshop. And here is a QR code where you can go to the website where you can sign up. Um, 
if you would like to have uh, the code for the deep view, then it's here. I would expect it will also be integrated as a component into the marketplace offers. And if you want to have an efficient counterfactual explanation toolbox, you might want to look into that. I'm not sure we will be uh, allowed to also integrate that into the marketplace. And this concludes my talk. I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you.